Are you just starting out with 3D printing? This video will help you out. Today I'm going to share 5 tips that really help me minimize mistakes when I first started my journey with 3D printing. My name is Carol Miranda and let's get into the video. First tip. Positioning the piece on the build plate. Here at SL Flix, we make sure to place the piece in the best orientation for you to print. But there are tons of STL files outside of STL Flix that might not be oriented correctly when you download them. When you're just starting out, you might think it's fine to print it that way, but no, it won't work. And you end up disappointed, which isn't great, especially when you're just beginning. I brought an example of a file that I think is really cool but came poorly oriented. If you print it as it is, it will definitely go wrong. Very wrong. Fail for sure. At this point, you should always look for a flat surface that has the most possible contact with the build plate and generate the least amount of support. In this slicer, you can change the orientation of the piece with the rotate option, but this will make the piece stay in the position you left in. I think it's better for beginners to use lay on face, which lets the slicer show you the options. And with just one click, you can get the correct orientation. Now, let's move on to the second tip. Guys, this is really a tip for those who are just starting out. I've made this mistake myself recently even, by accident. I sliced the piece carefully, oriented it correctly, everything you can imagine. But when I sent it to print, it went wrong. Just because the type of filament selected in the slicer wasn't the one I was using. I've printed TPU with PLA settings and it turned out like this wobbly thing. PETG with PLA settings and my print didn't make it the first layer. <laughs> Shame on me. Have you ever gone through this? Share your experience in the comments. This happens because the profile of each filament determines one of the most important settings. The temperature, for example. Beside that, coolant and many other factors that you learn over time. And if you want a bonus tip, Stick to PLA. It's the easiest filament to find the ideal settings for. Third tip, store your filament correctly. And what I mean is away from moisture. There are stages to a wet filament. At first, it will just make your piece more fragile or create stringy. But at a more advanced stage, it can even clog your printer's nozzle or leave your piece full of holes caused by bubbles. In other words, if you've just started and are still not using too much filament, don't leave it unprotected. But what should you do, you might ask? Don't leave it outside the box, just absorbing moisture from the environment. <laughs> and if you already throw away the original box, you can start in an organizer box with a second, better known as silica gel, or in a bag that closes tightly and also put a second in there too. For those who already like accessories, you can buy a dryer, like this one. Fourth tip. Ah! When to use or not use supports. Back to the slicer, you've already placed the piece in the correct orientation. Now let's check if it needs support. Since 3D printing works in layer, we can't have loose parts hanging in the air during the process. Or it would just turn into a randomly melted plastic. In these cases, we need to use supports, which are structures that will connect to the part that would be loose and hold it until the print is complete. Supports are also used when we have very steep overhangs, and these areas might suffer deformation because of the filament is being melted. If it has no support, it will affect the final results. We don't want that. No, no, no. So a tip when you are unsure if you need support or not is to check the angles using the painting support tool with the highlight overhang option set to 45 degrees. For beginners this is the recommended angle for models, but later on you realize that you can use it up to 30 degrees. You'll see that some areas will get colored meaning your piece needs supports. Then you just need to activate this option in the settings, generate supports. And if you want specific tips on supports, comment below, because there are many support settings to make them efficient and easy to remove. Fifth tip, now a tip for the impatience one. I'm 
know you are. After setting everything up, activating the support and doing everything correctly, give the print one last once over. In the sidebar, you can check layer by layer. I'm not saying you should look at every single one, but just by doing this preview, you can spot possible errors in your slicing. It is always worth doing a double check. In this type of check, I found floating areas, file errors, parts touching each other, among other small issues. So take a breath, check it one more time and then start the prints. So that's it folks, I hope these tips help you avoid common mistakes in 3D printing. If you have more questions or suggestions, leave a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe and share this video with a friend who are also just starting out. See you next time, Bye bye.